I am your host, Dr. Derek A. Reeves, and this is Just a Thought. Today I want to talk about what the scripture calls the divine nature, and it comes from 2 Peter 1 and 4. The scripture reads on this wise, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This is a very interesting scripture because Peter then begins to <coughs> insinuate, excuse me, that something transformed us, something came to us that caused our entire physiological nature. When I say phusis, physiological simply means that which is a phusis or that which is the established pattern for nature. And so he first of all says, whereby are given unto us. He says, we have something that's given unto us, and they are exceeding great and precious promises. When he speaks of something being exceedingly great, he uses the word uh, megistos, and megistos then means the greatest, or very great, exceedingly great, or that which is the greatest. And so Paul speaks very candidly and says, whereby are given unto us these things which are the greatest of all things, these exceeding great and precious. He uses for the term precious, timios. Timios then means that which is very valuable, costly, that which should be esteemed highly or honored. And so he indicates then that these things were given to us. They are the greatest. They are extreme, extremely great. They are treasured, very valuable. And so these things came by way of promises, epangelma. And so epangelma simply means self-committal, that God was committed to giving these things to us. He promised, and he who could not lie, could not break his word, he who could not deceive, simply yielded to us the greatest things that could be given the things that should be treasured because of their value. And he says, whereby, because we have received the greatest promises, the most precious promises. And then he says, these things enabled us to become partakers of the divine nature. It's very interesting here because Paul uses the word theos for the word divine. And it simply means according to Strong's, godlike, that which is divine. And he implies that it is also connected to the word Godhead, or the nature of God. We have to be very careful because simply having the divine nature does not make us the divine one. See, the divine nature it simply brings us into a state where we now share the very nature of God. We share the fact that we are of the light. We share the fact that his life is within us, that he has cleansed us and made us holy. And so it implies then that there is something physiologically within our spirit that now brings us into the context where we can fellowship with God. We have his power, we have his light, we have his purity, and through his spirit, he makes us holy. Now, when we look at nature, the term nature then is from the word phusis. Phusis then is that which grows from the seed. It deals with the production or the lineal descent or the genus or the sort. It deals, according to Thayer's, with those things that now are inherently in us that make us who and what we are. And so the writer, Peter, very interesting, he says, whereby are given unto us exceeding 
great. Those which are the greatest promises that God can afford to us and precious those things that are so valuable that they should be esteemed above all things. And then he says, and by these things we have been partakers of the divine nature. And it's very interesting. Again, he says, we have become partakers. We have become those who are partners, those who are uh, companions, those who are in fellowship. And so the word koinoinos, it means a sharer, an associate, or a companion in the divine nature. It indicates then that we are linked to God in this journey. It indicates then that we are co-laborers together. We partner in the very divine things because God now imparts these things to us. And so there was an emphatic change within us. And this change brought us into a state where now the very life of God, the very love of God, the very qualities of God are now a part of our lifestyle, a part of our very being, and these things emanate out of our spirit. Now, many people look at the church and they say that the church is filled with hypocrites and so forth. And that's because they don't understand the dynamics of being filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't believe that even those who are filled with the Holy Ghost understand these very essential and important dynamics. In man, there is the nature of God, and he still operates out of the human nature. He has a human spirit but his spirit has been filled with the very essential life of God. This life is considered to be called the Zoe. It is all of the life that causes God to live. And it is the life that is eternal, the life that is without beginning, without end. And so this life then, as it's imparted into our spirit, it causes us to now become immortalized spiritually and soulishly. The very same thing that God did in the beginning when he breathed into the breath, or he breathed into the nostrils of Adam, the breath of life, and man became an extended living soul that would move into eternity. When man lost this extension into spirituality, there was a severing or a breaking or an estrangement of the very connection of the life of God that was to consistently flow into him and bring not just the essential life that gave him existence and promoted his well-being and health in his body, but this life was also life that imparted a certain quality of thinking, a certain quality of volition, a certain quality of emotiveness or feeling and responding. And so when he restores this on the day of Pentecost, and he restores this as we receive the power of God through the Holy Ghost, then there is a reconnecting of the spiritual life of God into our spirits. But what must happen, remember, sin was condemned to operate in the flesh. The term flesh is sarx or humanity. And so there are two forces now warring against one another. Man's humanity and the divine nature that came through the spirit. The spirit really can do nothing unless we agree to allow him to, because locked within the mind or the minds of man is the will, the volition that gives him the power to choose. And this is why the scripture tells us, choose ye this day who you will serve. And so everyone has to choose and everyone has to submit to the spirit. They have to be led of the spirit. And so in 
many cases, the Spirit of God is there, the divine nature is there, but the paranoid thought processes and the encoded programming that we've gone through for all of our life, much of it is self-programmed. A lot of it can also be the programming that we receive from school, our friends, our parents, our brothers and sisters, and the community. And so these things have paranized thought processes, systems of values, and even though the divine nature is within us, we still have to walk in the Spirit. We have to allow the Spirit to have control. We've run out of time. I thank you for joining us. I am your host, Dr. Derek A. Reeves, and this has been just a thought. Until next.